again, it's good to be back with you. Um, the other day I got a question asking about how to calculate the area moment of inertia of a trapezoid. Sounds like a good thing to do, so well, let's do that. Okay, just to remind you what a trapezoid is. Okay, that's a trapezoid. Basically, you want to think about it as a triangle with the top cut off of it. So these two sides are parallel. Now we usually draw them, draw them this way. It doesn't have to be that the parallel sides are top and bottom. They could be at any angle. You could rotate this around. Um, the si these two sides don't need to be uh, symmetric. It doesn't need to be symmetric side to side. Okay? And there's going to be a centroid here, just like everything else. All right, so let's make that, we'll call that Y bar. Y meaning the vertical distance with that being my coordinate system, okay? So we normally calculate the area moment of inertia about the centroid. What's an area moment of inertia? You guys remember? In case you don't, if you do, skip ahead. If you don't, here you go. Okay, let's, let's divide this trapezoid into a whole bunch of little boxes and add them all up. Okay, that sound familiar? Let's do that. Well, the area moment of inertia we usually call I, and the portion of I due to that little box that we'll call, call that, that portion di is y squared. Sometimes mathematicians will say da. What they mean is dx dy. Mathematicians like to write using as few letters as they can, so sometimes they'll do that. But that's what this is. Now, if I had a whole bunch of these and added them all up, I'd get the area moment of inertia about that uh, line there, assuming that I measured all my y's from that line. Okay? It doesn't say anything about the area moment of inertia about the x-axis or the x-centroid, but here it is for the y-centroid. Now, we typically don't do this. You certainly can. That's where all these tables come from that you use in your textbooks and things. They come from something like this. What we'll typically do is we'll divide a shape into a couple simple shapes. Maybe I'll call that one, two, let's make those circles. One, two, and three. Okay? So two triangles and a rectangle. Well, if I have two triangles and a rectangle, uh, making up my more complex shape, I can figure out the area moments of inertia of those three shapes, and if I add them together correctly, I'll get the area moment of inertia of the total shape. So whether you do it this way, this way or this way, you're going to get this number. Well, what does this number mean? Area moment of inertia is the portion of stiffness of a beam that's due to its cross-sectional shape. Now, I have a little piece of board here, and there's the uh, cross-section. I think you can see it. If I were to stand on it and you know, support the ends and stand on it with holding it like that, well, it would flex quite a lot. If you look at one of my earlier videos, I'm sitting on this. And it does, or a bigger piece of this, it does. If I turn it this way, a little harder to sit on, but now it's a lot more uh, rigid, a lot stronger. Um, if you look under the floor of your house, all the floor joists, those boards that hold the floor up, are put in like this, not like this, because this makes the area moment of inertia higher. So that's what's going on here. So, pretty good, pretty good thing to know. How do you calculate it? Well, if I've got all those shapes here, I can use something called the parallel axis theorem. Actually, let me, let me write that out. Okay, so there's the parallel axis theorem. There's its name. And what it means is, if I have three or more, two or three or more uh, boxes, I can add the effects of those up to get the area moment of inertia of the whole shape. The parallel axis theorem is basically the recipe that tells you how to add them up. If I were making something out of Legos and I hold this whole pile of Legos and I add, stuck them all together, if I stuck them all together the right way, I'll get a shape that I want. Well, that's kind of what's going on here. So here's what it looks like. And I'll get out of your way here in a second. Okay, there. There's for, th for three boxes, or three shapes, and I can add as many others on as I want. Okay, it's not a problem. Well, I can start grinding out numbers right now, or I can do one other thing to make the problem 
even simpler. Here's what I'm going to do. It turns out, if I'm calculating the area moment of inertia about y bar for a shape, let's say it's a uh, uh, rectangle like that, I can slide the shapes this way all I want and I won't change them because the only thing that ever shows up in the equations is the vertical distance. It doesn't matter what the horizontal distance is. Now, if I'm figuring out I about verti the vertical line, okay, then yes, it matters quite a lot. But for this case, what we would call I sub Y, all right, I can slide those all I want, and it doesn't matter. It turns out I Y of this and I Y of that are exactly the same. So I can cut this up and rearrange it however I want to make my life easier. Okay? So what I can do, let's see if I can do it down here. Okay, there's two. There's the same one we had before. Let's leave three there. Okay, so far so good. So far I haven't changed anything. Let's take one and stick it right there. What I'm doing is, imagine I took one and cut it into a whole bunch of slices and rearrange those slices right there. Okay? Now, I can say that, that, that is one triangle. And this new shape has exactly the same uh, area moment of inertia about the y, ac the y centroid axis as this does. Now I only have two to calculate. So let's do that. Pick this up. And let's do that. I, got, I don't have to, uh, how am I going to do this? I guess I'll erase all this stuff here. I'll give you some dimensions. And what I'm going to do here, okay, I'm going to go through all the calculations. Now it's going to take a few minutes, so bear with me if you want, or just skip to the end if you prefer to do that. Okay. There's one. There's that. Okay, this is, let's call this 50. All this is dimensions in millimeters. Okay. So that's 50. Let's make that 70. And let's make that 50. Okay. And that would correspond to that original trapezoid with a base of 100 millimeters wide and a, the top being 50 millimeters wide and a height of 70. I've rearranged it a little bit, but it's going to have the same IY, okay? Find IY bar, okay? Find the area moment of inertia about the horizontal axis that goes through the centroid, okay? Well, to make this not take too long, I'll give you some of the some of the uh, numbers right up front. The centroid for the entire shape, okay. That's for the whole shape is 31.111 millimeters. I'm going to call this one and this two. Now I know these were different than what I used before, but uh, it'll it'll be a little easier if we do it this way. Okay, I one is one twelve bh cubed, so that's one over twelve times 50 millimeters times 70 millimeters cubed, okay, and that turns out to be 429, 429 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th, okay, area of 2, well that's just BH, and I don't even figure that out, that's 3500 millimeters squared. Now, D is going to be Y bar minus Y bar 1. So that's Y, let's call it D1. That's Y bar of the entire shape minus the, the uh, centroid location of just box 1. So that's going to be 31.111 minus 35, because the um, center of that is half that. So that's going to be 35 millimeters. I guess i got to do this in millimeters. And that is, uh, I'll make sure I get this right, 3.889. That's a negative there. Okay, now, it turns out it doesn't really matter whether this is positive or negative. This is going to be the one place in your life that you get to just basically throw away the sign. And the reason is that we're going to square this eventually anyway. 
So this is the one play time in your life you get to mess up your signs and the math will save you. Okay, so enjoy it while it lasts. So there's everything for, whoops. Sorry, I did that wrong, guys. Apologize, there you go. Um, okay, 136 BHQ. Now the area moment of inertia of a triangle is 136 bh cubed. So that's 136 times, let's see, that's going to be 50 millimeters times the height is also 70 millimeters cubed. And that turns out to be, let me make sure I get this right, 4764. 4 4.764 times 10 to the 6 millimeters. Oh, almost ran out of board. There you go. All right, so there's, there's that calculation. A2 is really easy. It's one uh, half BH, one half BH, sorry. Okay, get out of your way here. And it's just half of that, right? So it's 1750. Oh, that's, they're slightly less terrible. Okay, last thing you need to know here, D2 equals Y bar minus Y2 bar. Okay, well we know that one is 31.11. Okay, the centroid of a triangle is one third of its height. Okay, and so that's going to be uh, 70 millimeters over 3. That turns out to be 7.778 millimeters. Okay, we have all the pieces now, all the pieces together. So last thing I'm going to do, can I write this down here? Yeah, I can get to there. Well, let's see. Let's do it this way. Okay, get out of your way, get out of way so you can see all that stuff. All right. And let's maybe, yeah, I'll put it down here. I total. Okay, are we getting it? Yeah, I can just get away with this. I1 plus A1 D1 squared. I2 plus A2 D2 squared. And that's going to be, if you put, put all these numbers into there and add them up in that way, you get 2.064 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. Double check that you guys can see that. You can. Okay. So, what we did is we started with a trapezoid rearranged it a little bit in a way that makes it simpler to use but doesn't change the answer, ground out all the intermediate results like this, okay, added them all together in this way using this thing which is called the parallel axis theorem, and there you go. That's how to figure out the area moment of inertia of a trapezoid. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.